It took approximately 10 years to get 1 million users on our e-banking platform. It took us approximately 18 months to get 2.5 million users on our new application, Mobile Pay. And the speed of utilization you can see on the right-hand side. What is happening is that technology, our other forces, are now adjusting so fast that we're going into exponential trends. It's not only in finance, it's nanotechnology, it's robotics, artificial intelligence, or medicine. Historically, we have had a tendency to overestimate the short-term implications and underestimate the long-term implications. Because when you are in an exponential industry, you start basically at one, one becomes two, two becomes four. Very small numbers. But when the further you get out the curve, the bigger the impact becomes. And how do you take an institution like ourselves, who's been around since 1871, more than 140 years, to adapt to these changes? We have all the stats against us. 50 years ago, an average tenor on Fortune 500 list was 75 years. Today, the average tenor being on Fortune 500 is 15 years and falling. Or put it differently, only 12% of those companies who were there 50 years ago is on the list today. So how do you use a company who has some strength and been able to adapt but also be adaptable in today's much faster and higher impact society. We think, I think, one have to take one step back and do something which some may find banal, even obvious, but is to get this triangular right. And it's not by coincidence, on the top of the pyramid stands customers. The only way to gain long-term sustainability and return on shareholders' value is to take the customer perspective very serious. And now, even more than ever, because customer expectations are changing so fast. And we, who has been around for a while, could have a tendency to protect old business models or old cash flows and not adjust for the new requirements of the customers. But let's say some in the audience are thinking, um, I fear disruption uh, in my business. I need some of these people maybe a bit more out of whack than myself, and I need them to challenge my business from inside. But what do you actually do? Do they work very close to you so they know what you're doing or completely away? Or how does it work, you know, really hands-on? I, I think different models would, would work uh, fine, but how we think uh, it is working for us that we give them a mandate uh, which are just think out of the not out of the box, out of the building, by the way. So you have to think very unconventional. Think that you are a startup. Think about what is some of the benefits you have by being a part of the bank, but don't be banned of it. And basically, have it slightly detached, but also go back to the mothership once in a while to check out, is there anything the mothership can give, or is it something the mothership can get from the group? So it is the benefit of let's call it the Silicon Valley thinking, 
with actually the competence, the breadth, and the history of banking. And the, the balance, I think, which, which we have experienced now is, and I think I alluded to it in my, press, in my opening remarks, is that if you bring them too early into an organization, you just bureaucratize them. If you bring them too late in, you don't get the benefit of the large organization. So it's finding that exact inflection point when it's right. And that, that could be different for different uh, projects and different organizations, but I think that's the way at least we will continue to work. You talk about the interface with the customer experience, but if you take a player like Google as, let's say, Facebook, um, I read somewhere that what guys like you fear is that this service they might provide going into your business would not be, let's say, a focus where they, as a first step, need to make money. It would be maybe, like, say, an extra service to make sure that their customers stay keen on their core product. How will you compete with someone who's maybe giving something away for free that you make out of a living that you charge for? Well, I think it goes back to unless you have a long-term plan and take the customer seriously and you just protect your traditional catalogs, you will get dead. You made some examples of previous companies who's protected their old business model. Mm. We are also making launches, not to play too much on one particular uh, product, but mobile pay is an example which is for free because you get that reach and you're making an ecosystem. Mm. I think we need to do more of that because if we don't do it, somebody else will do it. But it's always finding that balance of getting the balance with the customers and uh, shareholder return, and then, of course, get the right employees. It could be short-term challenges. We all have, who, who runs a big uh, stock-listed company, that you have to deliver short-term. It's not delivered today, but prepare for tomorrow. That could be seen sometimes as a, as a challenge. It is sometimes a challenge, but then I think it's more important than ever that I, together with my whole board of directors and executive board, is to tell why are we investing so much today? Yes, because we want to prepare for tomorrow. We have an IT budget of four billion annually. I could cut that by 25% to improve the short-term results. But then I will definitely not prepare for the future. And that's the balance we all decide to find. But I think it's more important than ever, because I think the financial industry is within a big disruption to prepare and change. And what would be your advice to our audience if they don't have four billion, like you have, to, to throw away, to say, and not throw away, but to invest, of course, in something like this? If you have a small budget, what would be your advice if you want the people here to go home and think in these lanes? Well, uh, four billion must be seen in, in, um, in relation to the size of the company. Sure. Four billion is a lot of money, but if you compare us with Google's, Four billions is nothing. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's all about the relativity. Mm -hmm. uh, so said, I think we're big enough to play a, a, a major part in the transformation. I think, first of all, I think one has to acknowledge that digitalization, robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology are within exponential. How would that impact me as an industry leader or a part of industry? And how can other, or will other industries come in and take a part of that? And how do I reallocate my recruitment policy, my training policies? I say no strategy, but policies. And how do I adjust my investment policy? And how do I prepare also, for example, the investor community of how I'm delivering today, but also preparing tomorrow? I think it's a lot about stakeholder management. And finally, what I think, and, and we are still in the learning phase, is that if you're honest about it, most innovations happens by inspiration outside a company. Very few real in, uh, information and idea generation happens internally. So what we are trying to do is scout the market, always trying to find who is on the leading edge, and we work a lot with our clients. Some of our greatest products and solutions, particularly within business banking, we co-develop with our customers.